Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Rush. I'm the senior pastor here at Bible Way Church of Sumter, and I'm here with Bishop John Belton, who's the pastor emeritus of the Bible Way Church of Sumter, and we're here to do your devotional for today. So today's devotional is is actually one of Bishop Belton's favorite scriptures that down through the years, it's been one of his anchor scriptures that he always refers to. And we thought it'd be good to, uh, to just sort of let you in a little bit on, on his heart in this particular scripture, and we'll share a little bit about it. But it's a scripture that's found in Romans chapter 12 and verses one and two. Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. And I'll read from the New King James Version. And it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And verse two says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now that's a lot. And so we got a, we got a few minutes to try to unpack this, but Bishop is going to start off with verse one and uh, share with you some thoughts from that verse. From verse one, we find that Paul is dealing with and concerning the church. He's dealing with us concerning the pure holiness by the mercies and the grace of God. Through Jesus crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, we have been set free from the slave from slavery to of to sin to sin, and made alive and victorious in the spirit of God. Hallelujah! We have been blessed by the word of God. We have been blessed by what Paul is saying to us. Our sinful life was crucified and buried with Jesus. We must accept this as a fact of our holy living in in, in Christ Jesus. With that being true, therefore we have his power, praise God, his word, and all that he has given to us by his word and his spirit, praise God, to, uh, to uh, avoid ungodly behaviors. By grace and the power of the Holy Ghost, we have been set free to live our lives in holiness not by the will of our flesh, but by the power of His righteousness. That is of God righteousness. We must stand in truth. Daily present our bodies to God as an instrument of righteousness. An instrument of righteousness. God wants us to live that life. He has given us the authority through His Word, by His Spirit, to live a life of, uh, like that. Not only that, but to, to present all that we are to live a, 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 sacri a sacrifice and holy life to the power and the, through the power and the will of God. We must also live by the Spirit who give us power and freedom for the way of, the, for through the way of holy living. God has blessed us in a tremendous way through this verse of Scripture. It is one of my favorite, and I thank God for it. I, I quote it and I repeat it daily. But also, I would like to share with one, a couple of verses from Romans 8 and verse 1, and also verse 28, where he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And then he let us to know in verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So this holy living and, ho and righteous living, praise God, has been proven through the word of God, through the apostle Paul and others, that we can live that life today. And we thank God for the power of his word. And now to pick up with verse 2 that tells us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's a very powerful scripture because the word is telling us that we are different. Because of the price that has been paid that Bishop was just talking about, the, the price that Jesus paid on Calvary uh, to save all of us from our sins, that price is so significant that it demands a response for us to be transformed. 
our, our reciprocation to what Jesus did is that we walk in holiness, that we are transformed, that we are changed by, and here's how we do it. When we are not conformed to this world, that means we're not patterning our lives after the world. We're not following the, the customs or the patterns or the ways or the behaviors of the world, but we are living by kingdom principles. And the way we do this is by having our minds renewed having our minds transformed. So our minds must be different. If we are in Christ, we are a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. So we have to change the way we think. We change the way we think. We learn differently. We learn to know God's will for our lives. We learn what the will of God is in each situation. And so we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And once we are transformed, the Bible says that that all things are new. When we are in Christ, all things are new. All things are new. And that becomes very important because uh, just to use an example of the, the caterpillar and the butterfly, that process of metamorphosis, when the caterpillar changes into or is transformed into a butterfly, that is a permanent transformation. The butterfly never returns to being a caterpillar. Once he is changed, he's changed forever. And so when Christ, because of the work that Christ has done, our transformation, when our minds are renewed, we're not conforming to the patterns of the world, that is a permanent change. And when we do that, as Romans 6 also tells us, that we then are to walk in the newness of life. So listen, I hope that this devotional has been a blessing to you. It's been a joy yes. to have Bishop here with us. And uh, we hope and pray that this will be an amazing week for you and that God's favor and God's grace will be upon your life and those that are connected to you. God bless you.